Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, as I continue to do some movie reviews in the month of October, since it's Halloween month, why not review something that is very fresh, that's also smart, sometimes dumb, but very clever and downright hilarious. I'm talking about a dark comedy that's a satirical spoof of all these horror slasher genres that we've been getting from the 70s all the way to today or any other kind <laughs> of decade that we choose I'm talking about Tucker and Dale versus Evil which is about two well meaningful hillbillies who are best friends who are being mistaken for psycho killers by a bunch of group of clueless uh, college students as they're about to head off on vacation somewhere in the woods which they had a cabin inside and with a lake and all but then something mysterious is about to happen and then next thing you know because of misunderstandings things are going to go completely wrong <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> I saw this movie a long time ago, like I would say back in 2012 or 11. Yeah, I think it would be 2011. Even though the movie was made in 2010. And I laugh. <laughs> I, I laugh so hard when I saw this because it's it's so true. I mean, like, if you watch a lot of these horror movies all the time, you know exactly how it has all these cliches that you know you're going to point out. It's going to be so predictable <laughs> that it's just crazy. Like, you know exactly how all, all these group of uh, kids are just going to get into bigger trouble once they get into a run-in by a bunch of strangers you know they're, they're gonna get killed one by one and all these uh, very creative uh, death scenes but they're just so stupid you know exactly what they're gonna get into and they really pointed that out too and the dialogue is just totally fresh because they knew exactly what they're doing. It's part of their intention. And I love that. So it, it's kind of like the movie Scary Movie. You know, that was a film that that was a satirical spoof of all these uh, teen horror slasher films uh, that we were getting back in the late 90s, like Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. But it also parodied other non-horror related films like The Matrix. That's what makes it so clever, which I know that became a franchise, and they started parodying a lot of uh, popular films um, from that era. Yeah. But this one, um, being released by an indie company called Magnet Releasing, which is part of Magnolia Pictures, um, they really come up with something this uh, smart. And fresh yeah and um, it is on blu-ray and DVD uh, it is also available on streaming you can actually find the movie and that's where I watched it uh, I actually watched it on Prime Video because that's the best out of both worlds here <laughs> yeah but I hope I can find the blu-ray or D or maybe even the DVD maybe both because it's if, if they have it at Dollar Tree or Big Lots or otherwise I could just get it on Amazon because it's just it's just so crazy insane but it works and not only that but it actually has a lot of heart and soul and there's even a very heartfelt ending just to take it on on its level okay okay just gonna let you know about that but you got a great cast a very talented 
podcast right there. Uh, most of them you may have been familiar with, but but the rest of the cast, um, they seem rather, rather new at the time. But you know you're in for it. So let's begin with this review because I'm really having fun right now. <laughs> it stars um, Alan Tyke. Tyke, I think. Yeah, Alan Tyke. You may have known him from films like Serenity and, and all these... Uh, Disney films that he's been doing voice acting on. Yep, that's him. Uh, Tyler Labine, who was in the TV show Breaker High. Uh, yeah, that was a show that I believe was on UPN a long time ago. Um, I think that was a show with um, Ryan Gosling. Uh, yeah, I think Ryan Gosling was in that one. Um, but... He's also in the, sh the drama that's on NBC called New Amsterdam. It's a medical drama, just like ER, and so on. Uh, Katrina Bolden, um, who was actually in, this, in the sitcom Pretty Rock. Yes, and she was also in the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. And she was even in the movie Sex Drive. Uh, Jesse Moss, who was in um, Final Destination Free, yes, so if you recognize him, you probably will know who he is, but hey, it works that he got to be in, a, in another horror film, um, but he was also in The Uninvited, and, and he was in a TV series called The Whistler. Sheldon Simmons, uh, also from Final Destination Free. <laughs> But he was also in a comedy called Good Luck Chuck. Yeah, lame comedy. A fiddle, a Philip Granger, Brennan J. McLaurin, uh, who was in, hard to believe, he was in Power Rangers SPD. Yeah. And he was also in other, he was in a TV show called Just Cause. Christy Lang from uh, I Zombie. And Once Upon a Time, as well as Arrow. Yeah. Yeah, Travis Nelson, Alex uh, Osenault, Adam Butchuchinus, Joseph Allen Sutherland, Karen Way, Ty Evans, and Weezer. No, not the band Weezer, but the dog named Weezer. <laughs> um, it's written by Eli Craig and Morgan Jerkinson, and it's also directed by Eli Quake. The movie begins set in West Virginia. We meet two well meaningful hillbilly friends named Tucker McGee and Dale Dobson, both played by Alan Tuike and Tyler Labine. Yeah, Tucker is a well caring, um, who's also very smart intelligence, and He's also the skinny one, and, and thin, and slim, <laughs> who is about to teach the advice of his best friend, uh, Dale, who is very timid, unsure, but good nature, but he also has low self-esteem, and he has inferiority complex, which means that whenever he meets someone, especially if it's a girl, he gets afraid because of his natural appearance, you know, because he is bearded and all. That they they basically look at him like like he's a freak. Well, that was the case. So anyway, they're about to head off on the road because T Tucker just bought in a brand new uh, vacation home. Well, not exactly new, but but it was part of his dreams to actually just hang around and just have fun, you know, go fishing and do all these uh, nature activities and all that while having some beer, some food, and even hang around with their dog, uh, Jangers, played by Weezer. But they somehow got in a run-in while they were driving their pickup truck 
by a bunch of group of clueless uh, college students um, who are driving their SUV. Uh, one of them is Allison, who is played by Katrina Bowden, who is a beautiful level-headed psychology student. But the group leader, who is the tough one of them all, named Chad, who is played by Jess Moss, who's joined in with uh, Chloe, Chuck, Jason, Naomi, Todd, Mitch, and Mike, um, all played by Chelling Simmons, Brennan J. McLaren, Christy Lang, Travis Nelson, Alex Osenault, Alan Bochinez, and Joseph Allen Sullivan. Yeah. Apparently, um, they spotted uh, Tucker and Dale as they were driving off because um, they thought they gave a, a very creepy look. So uh, somehow they end up bumping to each other straight at the gas station while they were getting all the supplies. And once uh, they were heading off, um, Tucker and Dale had been pulled over by Sheriff Gurr, who's played by Philip Granger. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Tucker forgot his uh, wallet. He probably lost it. But he got his license registration, and they're hoping they, they won't spot any alcohol or anything. But the sheriff warns them of the dangers of the area, so they got to try to be careful right away. So once Tucker and Dale had arrived um, at the cabin, which is all run down, it's near the lake uh, that's deep in the woods. Um, you know, it had been desecrept, like everything was um, totally falling apart in some ways, so it needed to be fixed completely. So they had to try to find a way to repair it. They spotted some newspaper clippings of all these um, headlines that were happening you know, in the past because obviously you know, there were a lot of danger that's a heading, like there was a killer on the loose, you know, killing a group of, of a bunch of teenagers or college students or everyone around who, who ends up staying in this cabin. Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, while the college students um, are camping right, just right um, across to where the, the cabin is, uh, they were just camping out. Uh, they are having some beer, having some food and all. And Chad was about to tell a story about the Memorial Day Massacre that happened 20 years ago, which is a very legendary story where, where a bunch of group of teenagers, or perhaps they could be the same college students just like like they are. It kind of led to a twist where this this secure this psychopath just came by, ends up slashing and killing all of them. So they were thinking that if this happens, well, a lot of evil things are going to happen to them sooner or later, which. It can only get worse from there, because at night, uh, Tucker and Dale were about to head off to go fishing, while um, the group, while the rest of the uh, college students were about to go skinny dipping, and then somehow Tucker and Dale ends up spotting uh, Allison as she was about to ready to dive off, you know, stripping her clothes, and then suddenly she. She, uh, they both got scared and fright, and she just fell off um, into the lake, and she, she got knocked unconscious, and she was about to drown, so both Tucker and Dale had eventually rescue her and take her straight into um, their cabin. But the college students, on the other hand, were mistakenly misunderstood by finding out that they were both, you know, kidnapping her and, and was ready to, to kill her. You know, because they, they just took her out, they dragged her straight into the boats, and they're going off. So, the next day, Dale came over um, to make sure if Allison's all right. You know, she just woke up. Uh, he was about to give her some breakfast. 
uh, which when they met at first, you know, they were scared. Um, like they were going to give her some pancakes, but it turns out that he ends up giving her some bacon and, and eggs. <laughs> so Dale was about to explain to Allison that um, he just got knocked unconscious. Um, we're going to try to find your friends and all that, and Jenkers is right there. <laughs> You know, just, just sitting around, you know, being cute and all. Uh, meanwhile, Tucker was just about to go outside, and um, he was uh, about to cut in some um, some logs using a chainsaw, you know, doing some, um, all these chores and everything that he's doing. So suddenly, uh, that log was filled with a beehive, and he was covered with bees all the way around, you know, while he has his chainsaw with him. And then, um, yeah, one of the guys um, were about to go around saving Allison, and they, were, and they were about to call the police right away. Well, well, both Chuck as well as Mitch, um, they're about to try to uh, get to the cavern to save her, but then. Somehow they got run in with uh, Tucker with the chainsaw, and and they thought that he was chasing them around. One just went straight to the cops, while the other just got stabbed accidentally into a broken tree. Crazy. So now Tucker is all filled with bee stungs all the way around his face. <laughs> Once he uh, got inside the. Um, his cavern, where he just spotted Dale and uh, Allison, they're just playing uh, a board game, you know, making conversations and all. <laughs> yeah. So after they found Mitch's body, Chad persuaded the others that they are in a battle for survival. So it's like the survival of the fittest, and now they're they're gonna square off to to stop Tucker and Dale. If, if they because they totally got misunderstood with misunderstandings, thinking that they're going to go around, you know, killing everyone. Well, then there's there's a scene where where one of them actually went straight into the wood chipper, which he got caught inside. Tucker was very shocked too. Meanwhile, um, Dale and Allison were digging up a hole, which at this rate. Um, one just went straight down into the hole and got stabbed straight um, straight into it. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, Allison got knocked unconscious again with the shovel. Uh, I mean, this was just so insane. So at that rate, both Tucker and Dale uh, were about to take out the, the dead the student uh, yeah, out of the uh, the wood chipper, and only leaves off with his legs. But then Sheriff uh, Gurr just came by, um, while all the rest of the college students were in the car, and then, which they're all shocked and scared, and he was about to talk into them by saying what the hell's going on, and everything like this, because both Tucker and Dale had thought that. You know they're going around killing themselves or something like you know they they've gone really crazy I mean even Dale uh, told Allison you know once he woke once she woke up again saying that uh, um, just to let her know that are your friends on some kind of a medication or something because they're going completely nuts so yes um, well, things kind of got worse for them because at this rate, uh, Sheriff Gunn eventually goes inside the cavern. Yeah, right while all, all the students are in, in his car and you know, they're already watching him. They're thinking, why, why couldn't they arrest these guys? Well, and, well, then Sheriff ends up going straight into the cavern, but then the bar fell straight into his forehead, got stuck, and then he was about to go straight to his car and then then he eventually dies and then all of them had her about to get out of the car 
and they're ready to to run away or or maybe try to try to see if they can be able to f find a way at night to actually try to go after um, Tucker and Dale for their own particular plan that they need to bring all the it's all the um, the utilities that they got, you know, like they had to bring in a knife and they had to bring all this other stuff to go around, you know, since they can't even call the cops because they're not going to believe them, that they're going to just go around, they're going to try to save Allison and try to kill Tucker and Dale. But Chad eventually got in, in the cabin. And this is where Allison had told um, Chad that all this was part of a misunderstanding where, you know, Tucker and Dale are not the killers. They're actually very well-meaning um, hillbillies. And they just came in with a chat uh, with Dale and, and Chad uh, as they were sitting on the table and you know, drinking some tea. <laughs> So they were trying to explain their side of the story about what's going on. And then next thing you know, um, uh, the other free just came by, uh, which was um, Jason and Chloe. So they were trying to break in to retrieve Allison. But then the fire broke, broke out. I mean, because Chad eventually just threw in some... Just threw in all all that gas all the way around the, the cavern and then eventually um, all three of them um, well all Naomi, Chloe and Jason eventually died in the blast yeah Naomi was there too um, and yes because one of them actually smoked uh, a cigarette while near the gas tanks and all the only one who, who survived was Chad. And this is where it leads to the twist because at this point on, um, Tucker and Dale, along with uh, Allison, were about to escape straight to the pickup truck, but they accidentally crashed into the tree. And then, yeah, and they joined in with Jengers too. Um, because. Um, in the middle of the film, uh, Chad actually threatened uh, Jengers. Um, they took his dog, and while um, Tucker was ready to uh, to distract uh, Chad and the rest of the of the group, because they were threatening Jengers, and and uh, Dale was actually bringing in a nail gun that uh, Tucker just gave him and started shooting the nail gun at them. <laughs> And uh, that was just a, that was very funny right there. And um, so they did save uh, Jengers, but then Tucker got trapped. Uh, Dale was going to save uh, Tucker, but he found out that this is part of a trap. So, yeah, unfortunately, they, they even cut uh, Tucker's uh, fingers off. Yeah only two fingers and left them a message and all that yeah okay well let's get let's get forward to uh, what happens next uh, as we left off um, and this is the biggest twist of them all was when we find out about Chad um, because he told the story about the, the Memorial Day massacre that happened so there's there's a connection that Chad might be related to this killer and that happened to be his mom which unfortunately was sent to uh, a mental institution but he thought that his father actually uh, died like he wasn't saved at all but it turns out that the killer was his father the whole time like, or at this rate, his um, his grandfather. So that's where 
it gets really crazy by by the end of the movie was when um, Chad, who has already been, you know, already burned through his skull and his face, like he looked like Two Face right there. Yeah, because he survived from the, the explosion of the cavern. They squared off too with Dale actually saving Allison. Uh, they Chad just trapped uh, Allison into um, into the Saul machine, and then uh, uh, Dale was was because while Tucker was already um, in the woods, um, hoping he'll be able to recover because he's already you know wounded and and all. He's injured and everything. Um, since Chad already did kidnap Allison in the process, but luckily, Jangers is all right. Um, what's really funny here was um, <laughs> Dale was dressed up, hoping to, to stop Chad. And yes, and he was using the chainsaw, and, and they actually had a duel because... Uh, <laughs> because... Um, Chad actually has the, uh, you know, one of the, uh, yeah, one of these uh, knives and swords and all that stuff that, that he has, and, and, it, and it ends like a battle with each other between that and the chainsaw, and he did use a chainsaw to cut the, the rope, um, even though he was trying to open the, the rope because uh, it's all tied up in knots uh, while... The saw machine was already started, so yes, he did save Allison, and then he eventually, and both uh, Dale and, and Allison ran away. But then we also learned that um, Chad is allergic to chamomile tea. So, what do you know? He actually found a a box of that and just threw it at him when he came back when when they went straight into the. Uh, empty uh, factory and eventually somehow Chad just fell all the way down and he was killed so yes uh, Dale had, had saved Allison for sure and uh, Tucker is already in the hospital um, getting fully recovered and Dale just gave uh, a Tucker a, a nice present which was uh, a can of uh, Pat's Boob Wibbins beer and Dale uh, eventually um, is now going bowling with Allison as uh, his uh, bowling partner and also they fell in love in, in this very nice heartfelt uh, ending yeah and it was just sweet but also hilarious at the same time <laughs> uh, I just love this movie. It's just so insanely funny. I mean, I, I was laughing my head off through all these cliches that they throw in. I mean, everything just seems so predictable, but it works in so many ways. Um, the actors were in, are just excellent in portraying the performances. Their dialogue is all written straight into the script. So they they play. So this is how they intentionally play these characters. So temporality. I mean, you're not expecting them to to actually play dumb characters like you see in all these horror movies because often you do get a lot of dumb characters all the time. And and the fact that you get such a shitty ending too, or or it's going to square off to become like another franchise and all that, but. No, but they really knew what they were doing because it was written as as their attention. Like they are going to be playing dumb characters, but in a great way. But the characters uh, of Tucker and Dale are, are well caring, well meaningful, and and the fact that because of all these misunderstandings, I mean, they think to themselves that you know they were the killers because sometimes. Looks can be conceiving. That's the case of the message here. That no matter which which way you choose, I mean, there's always going to be something um, very uh, sinister about it. And that's how they they did it in this movie. Uh, I mean, you never thought for for sure once you see it because 
sometimes it could be either the hillbillies or it could just be the group of kids who are who one of them might be the most evil one of them all just because of their natural looks and, and their appearances so it's crazy i know but they they really know what they were doing they they were playing all these uh, cliches i mean you know exactly what was going to happen once you predicted it yourself but they really knew so they they knew they borrow all that from all these uh, horror movies because they always do that and all and also the gore you know and and all the the slashing and all the accidental death scenes are are just so well done how they how they portrayed it and the way they did it was just incredible because they know they're getting themselves into to all the troubles that they're having but anyway um but it's very refreshing there's not a bad scene in this movie all the scenes are totally memorable right there and i just mentioned all these scenes already in this review um, I mean, Alan Twyke and Tyler Labine are just, they totally have great chemistry together. They're sort of like the Lauren Hardy or Keenan and Kel or Penn and Teller in that sort of relationship right there. Um, they really care for each other, no matter how many dangers that they've been getting into. I mean, they know that they're not killers. I mean, they're very smart. Um, sometimes they... Well, one of them could be dim-witted, but but they have a kind heart. They just they're just scared. They could be an outcast and all. That's the way we see it. And I love the fact that there's even a teenager who's not stupid, um, aside from the other group of them. But one teenager who's who's a beautiful, sexy blonde who's not dumb. I mean, she's. She's very smart, intelligent. Uh, we learn that she's a farm girl too, and and she does. Uh, she probably would be a good therapist someday if, if if she tries. So even she has struggled too. But hey, she she got a degree. You know she. You know she earns all all of her uh, graduates and all that stuff. So hoping that she, she'll be able to have a future. But, I mean, yes, she was afraid at first, but at least she really cares for Dale once they get to know each other. So now we begin to see exactly their problems. So I love that. And the fact that you have a guy like Chad who could be such an asshole, as you can see it. I mean, yeah, by the looks of, of his uh, appearance and the way he's acting, I mean, you can pretty much tell that he's going to be indeed the villain of the story which now we know <laughs> so I mean I gotta give it all to Eli Craig and Morgan Jerkinson because they did an excellent job you know writing this story and Eli directing it too and and the cast you know they, they, they deserve a lot of credit for, for playing the roles perfectly um, it's a nice cinematography, perfect location for it. So, I mean, you could take it all for, for a $5 million budget to do a movie like this. It's like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Evil Dead, Deliverance, and all these other movies. They had a lot of references to them, too, as you can tell. Well, not so much. Um, and at least the jokes in the movies that were written in the dialogue are not forced. That's refreshing too. We don't need to see that. Because they knew exactly what they're getting into. So there's no forced humor, thank goodness. <laughs> they knew they were going for... This was part of the attention of, of the smart and clever writing. And also the, the dog is cute. You know, Jangers. <laughs> Yeah, so, I just, and, and the fact that everything just happens, you know, upside down, <laughs> but yeah.
So yes, uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is the ticket to check out if you love horror movies and comedies. Because it really works. So anyway, that's Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. And I give the movie 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.